Okay, guys. What's happening? SmartHelping.com here. It's 5.22 p.m. on the East Coast, and I've got an internal rate of return model. CFOs are going to love this because what are they doing every time they figure out a project? They want to know what's the internal rate of return? How does that compare to just putting capital into some, you know, uh, a fixed return facility and in basically a required return. So you're saying, well, if, if I can get 12% on my capital here, then the project I'm about to do better have an internal rate of return that's higher than just putting the capital somewhere else, or else, you know, that's how you either approve or reject a project. Um, now, obviously, your internal rate of return has its flaws, and it's not perfect, but it is widely used. Everybody uses internal rate of return to measure the uh, profitability and um, basically if they should put their capital in one thing or another. So what we've done here, I've done up to, what do we got here, up to 19 projects you can monitor or, or try to, to figure out at one time. So this is just a dashboard, which normally I put in blue here. Um, but what you're going to do is first go to the project schedule. And on the project schedule, this is where you're determining all the cash flows. And it's supposed to be super high level. It's top down. It's not going to be perfect again, but it should be close. And I've done enough logic here so you can get all the general movements in and out and all the logic there. So let's just do a sample one and then we'll do multiple ones because... I've also done an internal rate of return for everything, taking into account, assuming you start at the first investment date to the last time you have cash flows coming in per these assumptions. But then we also have each one individually. So let's just set up one here. Let's say, um, uh, what's this? This is going to be a new website. So you're going to build a new website for your company. Uh, or there's a project. Now it's it's going to cost so we can put a variable date in here to start and this is huge because it goes on a monthly basis and when you're trying to figure out internal rate of returns when you have cash coming in and out uh, on various months it doesn't work as easy as um, doing internal rate of return for a year if you have cash flows cash flow out one year and then in the next year periods so with the the huge function of this Excel is dynamic XIRR. So I'm going to show you more of why that's so difficult to accomplish, and you can see why I've got about a hundred helper columns here. You see these are just NA until I actually fill in numbers, but all of these are I have to have all these to get the right references um, because when the cash comes in and out is is going to affect the internal rate of return since I have something that can start and go out up to 28 about 22 years so you don't you can't just target the whole range because if you do that and you say you have cash coming in or out here and then it comes in for the next say five years and then you have an exit or something it's gonna take all the zeros and blanks after that fifth year and that's gonna dilute the the return it gives which is not right so every single rate of return here is going to it's going to based on the project assumptions it's going to find the reference of the cell of the first time you have cash going out and the last time you have uh, a cash flow for that project and it's going to dynamically reference cuz in XIRR you need a date and a value a list you know the the range of the date range where cash flows happen and the periods that correspond to those dates and it has to you know you have to only include you can't include dates where nothing's happening so if I have let's say out here then in 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 and then it ends here and my in, my formula is pulling these columns that's gonna mess it up so that was a huge hurdle that's one of the major um, why this is such a nice model so anyway let's so that's the dynamic date. So let's say we have a new website on Feb 18. We're going to have the cash come out. Let's say we're going to invest 125,000 in the website. 
then we're going to say, well, we we know we might not get immediate returns. So let's say your Feb 18 is the investment date. Let's say we expect to start seeing normalized cash flows by August of 2018, and we expect those cash flows. Now, obviously, you might have growing cash flows or um, uh, different cash flows for different periods, but this is going to assume you have a fixed amount, which means you can either estimate it here and say, okay, well, I think that's going to produce an extra, let's say, $8,000 a month of gross profit. Now, that gross profit is also important because, obviously, the project, you only want it to do this rate of return analysis, you just want to see the difference of if you put a bunch of capital into a bond for five years and got that rate of return back, or if you put all this capital into a project, what is the project going to return? Now, is, that's not including like all the other expenses your business might have, like uh, different overhead things that have nothing to do with this new website project. So you only want to, this ca this cash flow should be the total revenue is expected to bring in less any expenses incurred by the project ongoing that are not included in this initial investment. So like if you, you'd have hosting here, different network costs. Um, so you subtract all those out to get this cash flow number because this just wants to see how much cash is actually returning to you f in the project. So we're going to say $8,000 a month and starting in August of 18, so it's a little bit of a runway. And then let's also say, well, when's the cash flow stop? Let's say um, it's going to go, we expect it to go for five years. So let's go August 18 to August 2022. And these dates are all dynamic validation based on the first date you put in here. So this is going to populate the next 20 years worth of months, and then the validation is going to target this for choosing. So this is where you would put the first date. And the date you should use is the first date that you have any cash going out for any project. Okay, so we're investing $125,000. we are saying we're going to get $8,000 back every month, and we're going to have that get that return f until August 22. So now the last logical step we have here is, is there an exit value of the project? This is just, it might not apply to all cases, but it could apply to some. And this means, well, after your cash flow is stopped, you have any value left that you may sell the project off or, or whatever. So maybe, hey, maybe I might actually get a, a pop, say, I don't know, $35,000. Okay, so now that is one project, and now what's the internal rate of return of, of those cash flows? Well, we go over here, we see, oh, it's 73%. And you can see five years out that 35000 didn't have much of an effect. If we take that off, you're only down 2% on the internal return because that's taking into account the time value of money. So what that says, the internal rate of return simply says, how much do you have to discount these cash flows in the future so that the net present value of them is equal to your initial investment. So obviously here you the higher the number this is that means the higher the the um cash flows are. And that's what you compare this percentage to your required return. And you obviously if the internal rate of return is higher than this and you can see here it's 191% higher than the project is approved. And let me put another thing here. So if or this is blank, or this is blank. Oh, there we go. All right. So. We have money going out here. Now let's say, let me just show you how difficult or why this formula, th this indirect reference formula is so helpful. Let's say I, I do the XIRR and I start here at this value of going out. And let's say I do it just all the way down here. Let's just say I have 
I don't know how to dynamically reference um, XIRR, so I just go to DK. So there's the values, here's the dates. Now this number, assuming I'm not going crazy, this should be much lower. And actually, 72.89, is that the same? It is the same. It is the same. Hold on. So what if we pull it back one? Because here we obviously have different start dates. And now it's zero. So there's that's why you have to dynamically reference. And I don't I think the reason why it wasn't that much different to two decimal places is because we already went so far out. Let's try let me just try one thing here. Let's say we stop it er much earlier, like here, 61.96. And then this, if we pull this back out, let's see what this is. Same. Okay, so that, it doesn't seem to be too bad on if you're trying to get the internal rate of return going out in time, but you need th to dynamically have different start dates because obviously different projects are going to start differently. So we've got that formula in there. It's definitely helpful. Okay, so um, let's put another, and let's see here. And this we would actually always this is always gonna be the first month. So whatever you put here is always gonna be your first month. So we wouldn't have a date after that for the first one. So you can see our consolidated rate right now is also fifty eight percent. Let's go ahead and start an, uh project two. And let's say that's gonna start in a couple months. It's gonna cost four hundred thousand dollars. Uh, the cash returns you expect are going to be later, let's say June of 18, it starts. Let's say it's going to take almost a year, May of 19, to the cash will start coming in. And we think it will produce a gross profit of, let's say, 12000 a month. And then it's going to run for five years. So we'll go May 24, I don't know if that's four or five years. And then let's say the exit value is zero. So now what's that internal rate of return look like over here? Oh, much less, 21%. And you can see, you don't have to readjust the formula even though the cash flow is not starting until all the way over here. If we had it hard coded, it would not work because it'd be going from D because you have to account for all these different scenarios. Okay, so 21%. Now let's say, our, what's our required rate of return here? 15%. Let's say, what if this is 25%? Then you get a reject, red, turns red, and it says it's 17% uh, less than the required rate of return. Then we have our chart here that shows all the, the projects, and you can see in this color we have the internal rate of return, and in the color behind we have the required rate of return. You want the blues higher than this, and I'm half colorblind, so it's hard to think that's orange. And and that's pretty much the dashboard, and it, this auto updates based on the project, project names, and and everything is dynamic there. We can add more projects. Uh, let's say, what if this had an exit value of 150,000? How much does that change the rate of return? Up to 25%. And actually still 0.04% less than that. So this comes up reject. Um, now, another thing you can do, if you know 
if you have uh, cash flows that change, you can tr you can build those cash flows on a monthly summary, map it to this, and then just put it onto here for whatever project, and it will all pull through. If you don't just want to do a fixed amount return every month, um, and then you can see, look at our our consolidated here is still updating 31%, and that's assuming we have a cash flow out here, here, and then we're returning all of this over the final date all the way up to May of 2024. So that's taking into account kind of everything you're doing based on the start date. Now that's obviously a little flawed because you don't really care if you're not starting this project until June you know, and you're, you're accounting for that ca cash outflow here starting in January because this is happening. You know, it's a little flawed, but you can say, well, hey, I have 10 projects I'm looking to start. If you have to invest in all of them on the same start amount or or somewhere around the same period, you know, first couple months, this consolidated IRR is going to be relevant to you. So that's it. Uh, my goal here was just to create a really simple um, IRR comparison model. And with a simple dashboard, a little bit of conditional formatting and logic. Give this an outer outer color here. And just really simple to use. So I'm I'm pretty sure anybody could handle the the userness or you know the user friendliness of this is pretty high. Um, it's not that hard to do any uh, enter any of this stuff. And then you get nice clean summaries here. Everything makes sense. The math is working. As we can see here, it's all dynamic. And you can check out the um, yeah, and those are supposed to be NA, just the first two are filled in. That's no problem. Perfect, perfect. Um you can check out some of the logic I'm using to to get this to map with the indirect uh, cell references on the XIRR formula. And the reason, only reason I'm using XIRR is so that's to do with cash flows that happen like on different increments. So you might have this might not even be the first of every month. You might have different dates in here for your specific situation that you want to apply to all projects, and that might not be monthly increments. For example, if we put this to, well, I mean, you really would have to get specific to see a change in the return, but it will adjust if you have something happening in June 5th, and then the return's not till July 30th, it's going to know that that was a month and a half and not just one month of time. And that's why it's so a little bit more granular than the, the standard IRR, but it's the same return, it's extrapolating this over a year. Um, to get your year rate of return. So that can be compared to annual returns of a bond or whatever your required rate of return facility is. Um, and yeah, I'm really pumped with this. I'll probably reference this myself in a lot of different projects I do. I think it's got a lot of valuable tools here. And um, there you have it. So if you want to purchase I do sell this uh, template you can get it from me fully editable and usable it's simply going to be a one time cost of $45 and you can get it at smarthelping.com the link to the specific page for you to buy it and download it will be in the description box below this YouTube video alright have a great rest of your Sunday